In this video, I'll take you through step-by-step -step how to create three different button hover interactions in Figma. Press T on your keyboard to open up the type tool and let's type out our word. Let's just type button. This will be the text inside our button. Come down to the bottom menu and open up the sparkle icon and search for lucid icons. When that opens up, let's just drop in an arrow as this interaction uses text and an icon. Now that's been placed in, we're going to resize it a little bit. Constraint properties, that means it'll scale evenly. Just going to bump it down a little bit as it was looking a little bit unbalanced compared to the text. I'm just going to reduce the stroke width as well, so it looks more even. Now with both of them selected, let's smash shift A to apply auto layout. Let's fix up the spacing and add a little bit of padding. This will be the base of the button. Set a background just because it'll be easier to see that way. Quick shortcut, I found you can just add one number instead of adding all six, so you'll save your millisecond. So let's add one F to make it white. Let's round the corners a little bit just to stylize it. Within the icon, so it's in a frame in there, you can see that in the left hand side. Duplicate the icon. With the frame selector, make sure that you have clip content on. Now select the top icon in the layer panel and bump it across to the left. So it's outside the frame, so you can't see it. If you click Command Y, they'll turn outline mode on and you'll be able to see where it is. Now select your button. Now let's name our layer. We love some tidy layers. And go up to the top right and click Create Component. Let's add a variant property. We'll name it State. And now let's add a variant. So this will be the hover state that we're gonna create. Let's change the color as well. And now within that frame with our icon again, we're gonna select that top one that we bumped out to the left, and now let's center it in the middle of the frame. Select the second icon that was below that one, and bump this one out to the right. So the same process again, but now we're moving this one to the right. Now let's click prototype, drag a noodle from the first one to the second one, and change it to while hovering, smart animate. Let's make the ease out time about 450. Let's just fix it up in the auto layout so that it's centered when you stretch the button. Now hold option to drag a copy of it and I'll take your copied version and place it into your frame to test it out. Select your frame and go up the top and click prototype. Now when you hover over your button, you can see your basic hover interaction with the icon swiping across as you hover over it. This is a really nice basic one that adds a bit of delight when you're presenting it to clients. Just a bit of a plus one. So that's your first button interaction we're going to create. Now let's create the second one. Drag a copy of your first one as we're going to be using a lot of the same styling. So we can use this as a base. Just right click on it and click detach instance as we just want the structure of this button so we don't have to remake it. Now with this one, it's a similar process but it's gonna be a different outcome. Select the top icon and center it. But now this time, instead of bumping it to the left, we're actually gonna move it downwards. So move it downwards, so now it's below out of the frame. We're gonna follow a similar process as we did with the icon. So we're gonna draw a frame, so click F to draw a frame. And now go to your text and you wanna find the width and the height of it to make this frame as you want it to be a really similar size. Once you've copied this, now you'll have your text wrapper set up. Let's rename it text wrapper, so it's really easy to see and place your wording inside it. And now use the position controls to center it in the middle of your text wrapper. I did mine the wrong size, so I'm just fixing that up now. Now we're gonna use the exact same setup, the same as we copied the icon before and made a duplicate. Let's do the same with the text. So select your button text and make a duplicate. So now you have two of them. Select the first one and drag it below so it's not shown and it's out of your text wrapper that we just set up as a frame. With your text wrapper, make sure it was on automatically, but make sure that you have clip content on. And as a little plus one, I like to do a slight angle on the text so it looks like it's coming up one word at a time as it loads on the hover. Now that's bumped all the way out. Select your button and click Create Component. Same as before, let's make this hover. Let's copy the same color of the other hover and use it for this one. You can use whatever color you want that works for your brand. Now with the second hover one, select the icon they bumped out and move that back into the center and grab the second icon and move that one upwards for the second state. 
And now we're gonna repeat the same thing with the wording. Take the type that you bumped down before, remove the angle from it, and then use the position to center it in the middle of your frame. And now take the second wording, apply the same angle to it so it looks consistent, and then move this one up so it's out of your text frame. Click prototype, drag a noodle from the first one to the second one, and make it while hovering. Smart animate and 450. Now drag a copy of this one and place it into your frame to test it out. Select your frame and click the present button up the top right. And here's your second interaction. When you hover over this one, peering from the bottom with the icon as you hover over it, and then as you release the hover, the other words fall back down. Quite a micro interaction, but it's quite a popular one. You, quite, you see this interaction quite a lot at the moment with the text looks like it's appearing word by word. We can take it one step further as well and add another level of interaction. Take a copy of your second button, right click and click detach instance because we want to just take the styling we have to set up the third button. And now with this one, click R to draw a rectangle and you want to draw a rectangle that matches the dimensions of your button. So go and copy the width and apply it to your button and the height as well, take that and apply it to your rectangle. So the rectangle is the same size as your button. Now select it and paste it within your button. Go up to the top right and click the ignore auto layout or the position absolute button and center it within the middle of your button. Round the corners as well, because that button has round corners. And now we need to do two things here. We need to select this rectangle as this is gonna be the background on the hover. And we wanna right click and click send to back. So you can still see your words when it comes in. And the next thing we wanna do is we wanna select our button and change it to clip content. So you can't see anything that goes outside the button frame. This one we're gonna build a little bit backwards. So select the hover color that you wanna use and apply that to the rectangle we just set up. This will be the hover color. Now with all that set up, select the background rectangle and you can use your arrow keys to move it downward so it's out of the button. So it's below the button and you can't see it anymore. Now select your button, go up to the top right, click create component. So same as before, if you wanna use the before interaction we set up, move the icon into the center, the top one, and then the second one, move that one above out of the frame. And the same with the text. Move that above, same as before, and apply an angle to it. And apply the first button text that was beneath it. Get rid of the angle and move that one to the center. And now the difference with this one is you're gonna select the background rectangle that you set up before. Use the position tools to move it into the center of the button now. Now click prototype, same as before. Drag a noodle from the first to the second. Change it to while hovering. Smart animate 450. The one last thing you need to do to make it responsive is set up the constraints of the background rectangle. Because if I show you now what will happen is it looks great on this size, but if I drag this button, the rectangle isn't responsive right now. So there's an easy way to fix that. Select the background rectangle and it's behind a drop down now in the new Figma. Click on the constraints icon and set it from being left and top to make sure that it's left and right and top and bottom. So now it's taking all four corners instead of just the left and the top. Make sure you do it on your hover one as well. So the background rectangle, when I resize the button, it's responsive and the background rectangle will fill whatever size it is. Now let's drag a copy to test it out in your frame. Now select your frame, click present, and here's the last interaction. When you hover over your button, you get the swipe up from the text and the icon, and you also get the background changes that wipes up as well. You can set this to whatever color or whatever styling works for your brand as well. And so you can create these three different interactions for your button. You can mix these together as well if you want to make it coming from the left or coming from the right. It's still the same formula, just change around which direction it was, but follow the same pattern of using clip content and bump them out of the frame and then bump them in when you're using the hover. And you can create a lot of different versions of this kind of interaction. And these little micro interactions really help when you're presenting to a client to just show that you found these plus ones, you're taking it a little bit further and you're trying to push the brand instead of just doing a basic hover and it helps it stand out. Thanks for watching. Check out another video here.